Hello everyone again. Uh, we are going to uh, uh, also we are going to start a, uh, the last part of the chapter two, which is related to the uh, uh, intake and sedimentation tanks. Uh, as we mentioned before, uh, but before that, is the so, is, is the voice and the screens clear? You all. Is it clear? Yes, yeah. Good. Yes. Good. Very good. So we we, we mentioned before, and uh, we said that we have an intake structure, which is the first uh, structure that we uh, have to have it in any water treatment plant. And uh, here's the water treatment plant, uh, and here's the intake. And we mentioned that there is a specific conditions to select which kind of intakes that we have to do. But the most important thing that is, uh, we have to know that uh, for each screen we should have, uh, uh, for each intake we should have uh, screens. And we have three types of screens, bar screens. In the bar screen we have fine, we have coarse, we have middle, and it will depend on the space between the bars. So more than 25, um, millimeters to that two, cent, two centimeters and a half it will uh, it will consider it as a coarse screen less than 0.6 centimeters is considered as a fine and in the middle it will be uh, medium and then it's a mesh screen which is uh, mesh it means that it will be look like uh, crossbars and there will be between 1 to 25 and also the main point here is that we have to know the velocities between these two, uh, uh, between the bars will not be much more enough. We have to consider uh, the water will, will uh, the more, the more velocity, high velocity uh, will, uh, velocity is not allowed to be between the bars. So it should be usually uh, from 0.3 to 0.6 in the bars and it will be 0.1. 5 uh, 2.2 meter per second between the mesh. Uh, why we need this? We need this to check the uh, spacing between the parts. And we mentioned this, we, we solved this example, and here is the uh, screen between the, the bar space between the parts. And here's what the first pipe intakes or the structure that we have. Uh, this is will be, uh, there is, a, yeah, here's the intake. There will be a pipe here and there will be a pipe here. And we have the high water level, we have the low water level. And uh, uh, in the previous homework, you saw that we have, a, a, this is a, a screen gate and this is the water is coming this way. There's a pipe, there's, this is called sump. And uh, we say that there is a, a bottom level there's the water level in the stream, there is uh, water level in the sump, so the difference between them, it will be between this one and the water, look at this one, and look at this one. So this, 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 uh, this uh, change or this uh, difference, it will be due to head losses, head losses uh, or head losses. What is the head losses? The head loss is that the water will go within the pipes to from this distance, from L distance. So there is an L. So the uh, there is an L and there is a diameter of pi, diameter of the these pipes which convey water from this part to the sun. So usually there is a friction head loss. This friction head loss is F L over D V square over 2G. The V is the velocity of the water through the pipe, and the length is the length of the pipe. Uh, D is the diameter of the pipe, D or phi. F is the friction, the uh, uh, Hazen William uh, coefficient, and it will be between 0.01 to 0.02. And uh, that's why we have the level of water at the sump is lower than the level of the water in this. Uh, stream. Now, uh, we say that in this uh, sump, it's considered as a tank. The volume 
of this tank tank can be found through the what through we know that the volume divided by time is equal to q so since we have a q we can consider the time for uh, for having this one it will be two min minutes minimum or five minutes so we have two time either it will be two minutes for uh, maximum and for minimum flow will be uh, five minutes so maximum q which is equal q maximum monthly uh, will be equal to 1.4 times the q average that's the maximum and this is the design flow and the minimum is the 0.7 times the q average that's the minimum so whatever which one uh, so we should find two volumes that was your homework the volume when we have two minutes the resistance or the water will stay here for two minutes or for five minutes then uh, we have the time we have the flow then i can find the volume now when you have a volume the volume it means the length times width times depth there is a relation between the width and for the length we need we need to know how much pumps or how how many number of the pumps for example for this case we have three pumps one two three so for each one we have to have at least a space for each pump the space should be related to the pumps so it will be between one to three meters means the length the length is equal to the number of the pumps times uh, for example if i want to take one of the 1.5 meters so the number of the pumps here is three times 1.5 will give you the length of this tank by 4.5 meter and the width of this pump usually it will be between one and three you will take one of them and then when you have the width and the length and the depth will be very easy to find it as you have the volume. This is, was the previous review chapter or lectures review. Now, what we have here, uh, we, have, uh, uh, we have to check for the velocities. Since we have done with the volumes, we will check for the velocities. Uh, what velocity we need to know? We need to know the velocity through the, the maximum uh, uh, from these pipes. The velocity from these pipes, if you we found the suitable number of the, of the pumps and the diameter of the pumps that we have, here's the end, got this one. Uh, this is the, for the, the pipes, intake pipes, I mean, by the pipes, these pipes, or I mean these pipes. So we have the pipes, we should check for the pipe and the velocities uh, should be checked. We have the actual, the minimum and the peak. So the V actual, here is the V actual, uh, which means the Q divided by, uh, it should be the Q divided by the area of the pipe and it will should not be less than 0.6 why this is happen because for self cleaning and also the velocity should be less than 1.5 uh, it will be um, uh, just a minute okay please I'm sorry for that. Uh, we say that the velocity through these pipes uh, from the river to the intake should be uh, as in the following. Now, the number of the pipes should be n, and the diameter of the pipes should be selected from these numbers. So you have to check with the n and the velocities also. 
Now the last part, the last part of this uh, of this story is that we have a sump. Now we are done with the pipes in the walls, so we have the sump itself. Now this sumps, I mean by the sump here, the sump. Uh, this sumps, what is looking for? It's look at, it's it's a, a tank for collecting water here. And then there is a pump that's affecting, that's delivering water to the treatment plant. We know the volume of the tank sumps, we have to end with that one. Now, what I have to do, I have to know how much is the power, horsepower of the pumps. Now, we have pumps and we know, we want to know how many number of the pumps that's required and how much is the uh, kilowatts uh, of the pump are needed. Now for that one, we have this equation. We have this equation which is related to the, uh, yeah, the horsepower of each pump we have to know is here is this equation. It's equal to uh, the total head. What I mean by the total head is this is the sum. This is the sum. It means that uh, the water is coming from the river to this is the river, and I'm sorry for the horrible drawing. Uh, this is the sump. Now we have to put a pump here, and this pump will send water to somewhere. So that somewhere is a water treatment plant. Where is the water treatment plant if I want to check for uh, If I want to check for this one, uh, uh, here's the uh, river, and this is the uh, water treatment plant, and, and I mean by the water treatment plant, the first unit in the treatment plant. Uh, here's the council, let me, this is will be much clearer for you. Yeah. There is in Dukan, here's the, uh, this is the first unit, the first unit that received water from the river. Look at this one. There is a, a river that's receiving water, yeah. This is the river. So the, the intake is here. So the pumps that is sending water through the, the this is a, a street and it will cross the street and will send it here. Now, the, 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 level, the level of the sump and the level, and the level of the first unit, it will be considered as the head that's required. So what, what pump, what horsepower of the pumps that you need, you have to tell me what is the difference between the two levels. The first one is in the sump, and the second one is in, uh, is the first, uh, first one. And how do I have to find this one? You have the contour lines here, and you have the contour lines here, so the difference between them is going to give you uh, the level. Let me give you this. This is another more clear. Yeah. So, for example, here's the intake sump. And the first, let me say, the first, uh, the fir here's, let me say, uh, here may be the first. Yeah. Here's maybe the first unit. So the level here, how much is the uh, above ground level here and the sump level, the difference in the level will give you, uh, uh, this is the head that's total head, that is uh, the head that's needed for raising water. So raising water means that you are lifting water to uh, the first uh, level. Now, what if I don't have the level, let me say uh, uh, this one, so what should I do in case that you don't have this one? You have to measure the ground level and add it five meter to that ground level and say this is the first level. For example, in our case, yeah, in our case, 
uh, for example, the structure is not be built yet, so we have 500, uh, 535 meters. Okay, this is the ground level at uh, this location. Then I will say 535 plus 5 meter, it will be the 540 meter, it will be the first the first one level of the first uh, uh, structure in the treatment plan. So I have this for 540. I will measure the depth of the water and the level of the water in the intake. So the difference between them will give you how much meters you have to have a pump to raise that for, uh, for, 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 for the uh, pumping. So that's called static head. So the static head it will be the first, uh, the first treatment unit for my cell that was 540 minus the water level in the sump. Where's the water level? Here's the water level. So the water level in the sump, this is the water level here. And the first unit, uh, uh, here's the first unit. So the difference between these two ones are called a static head static head this is the first part so the first part is that how much is the level that will be needed plus so the water this pump should raise water from this tank to this tank how for how many meters for head static again now during this travel the, this long story the the water will also have another head losses and it means that there will be a head loss for that one. This head loss, it will be dynamic head loss. So how much is the length of the pipe is there between the sump and the first intake? This is considered as an L. And how much is the diameter for that one? So uh, the friction head loss is, uh, will be F, L over D, V squared over 2G. Now, again, uh, uh, you have to know how much is the Q. And from the Q, from the diameter of this pipe, you will know how much is the velocity. Through that velocity on 2G, there will be LTF, so there will be friction head loss. This friction head loss will be added to the static head loss. This is, again, uh, uh, the water or the pump should have be able to submit two heads, static head and the friction head loss. And by the way, uh, there is another head loss due to the valves or fittings and this is considered as a 10 to 20 percent of the whole mine this is the minor losses this is the uh, friction losses so the total are called secondary head losses and the secondary head losses it will be uh, 1 to 1.2 v square over 2g plus the fl over d uh, plus uh, that one here, here's the secondary, and the velocity v square over 2g. So in addition, if I want to uh, add all of them together, I will get this equation. And this is the equation. The uh, uh, total head that's required is equal to static plus dynamic. What is the static? The static is the difference between the first treatment unit minus the water level in the sound plus uh, the head losses, the friction head losses that we have uh, from 0.1 to 0.2, 10 to 10 to 20 percent, the for for the friction uh, head losses, which is F L over D V square over 2G plus V square over 2G. Now uh, this is in case that uh, if the uh, first treatment unit level was known, if it was not known. What should I do? I will bring the ground level at that one and I will add five meters to it. And then I will say, here's the, uh, the uh, first treatment unit level minus the low water level in the tank minus the head friction. This is what we're going to give you uh, the whole uh, uh, head of the, requ the required for the pump. Now, when we have that head... Doctor? Yes? Can you please repeat the procedure shortly? I mean, the picture that we had it with the pump, yeah. how we found the static head loss and the dynamic head loss. Yeah. So, yeah, it's okay. 
Uh, let me say I will assume that I have somewhere here a river, okay? This is the river, okay? Now, uh, there is, this is the bank of the river and there is uh, somewhere here uh, the sump tank. Sump tank, this is the river. So what I did, I just, uh, we have pipe from this sump, uh, from this uh, river to this tank, right? So this is in the uh, chapter, previous chapter we discussed this one. Now, the, there is, so there is a level here that it's called a water level at the sump, okay? Now, I should put a pump here. This pump will take water from this tank and it will send it to another place. Right? This place is called, this called is called the first, the first unit. Where, which unit? The first of uh, ground uh, of the water treatment unit. So the water treatment unit, this is the water treatment unit, have more, uh, have, have clarifiers, have filters, have sediment, these are clarifiers, and this is a filter units, there is a chlorination tanks, and so this is called the water treatment unit. Now, my point is how to know how much is the power, horsepower that's required for these pumps. Now, we know that the pump is to be, uh, to do, so there is a pipe, right? There is a pipe that will be connected to the pump and it will send water to the first unit, right? Now, the level here, level of this tank uh, to, should be known, should be known. So, for example, I will say the this level of the water treatment plant first unit, it was 550 meters, I don't know. And uh, usually the river is lower than this one, and it will be, there is a water level. Let me say here it was 510 meters. So, the pump should be able to send water for raising water for at least how many meters? Hello? 40 meters. 40 meters. So if we need to have a pump at least to raise water from 510 meters level to 550. So this is called static, static head. So at least we have this, at least, this is the horsepower. And by the way, we have to not uh, miss that, we are going to calculate the horsepower. The horsepower is equation is telling us that you need to have the equation. And here's the equation, the equation is gamma QH, gamma QH, horsepower, gamma QH, H should be in meter, and uh, gamma will be kilogram per meter cube, and uh, total uh, meter cube per second, the head will be uh, in meter, so the efficiency is then the horsepower. So again, at this point, efficiency is gamma Q, or sorry, not gamma, it's rho. It's a rho, rho QH over, uh, I think, uh, uh, efficiency one, efficiency two. This is 1,000 kilogram per meter cube. As we know, this is the density of water. Q should be the flow that we are going to send it to this treatment plant, which is 
usually be the maximum monthly Q, meter cube per second. So uh, we have this one. The head is the total, total head. Total head means by how much is the level of water that you need to raise. Uh, now we have 40 meters, just the static. In addition to that, uh, this, the water, when it's traveling from the sump to this tank, it will lose energy. So you have to add, the pumps should be more effective by having, and to cover all, again, to cover that head losses. This head losses, it's called HL. This is, will be due to two things, friction head loss and minor head loss. What I mean by the friction head loss is the length of the pipe. Due, due, due to the length of the pipe, there will be losses in energy. And we have uh, FL over dV square over 2G, I think in fluid, you took that one. It's a, 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 a darcy Weisbach equation. Uh, so we have the Q, we have the diameter of the pipe, we have the length of the pipe, so we have the velocity, so we have the type of this uh, pipe, so I can say the friction head loss of this pipe, uh, it will be, uh, can be found. So I have the head loss due to the friction. I have the head loss to the, due to the minor head loss. So you don't need to calculate the K for valve, K for entrance, extra uh, reduced and, and so on. So it, it say that it will be between 10 to 20 percent, 10 to 20 percent. So what I should do, I have this pump should be covered that head loss, which is this one plus that one. Again, there is one thing else, which is the, uh, uh, the velocity, which is the V square over 2G. Again, this is, should be covered by our, uh, this is what we should cover by the pump. Here's the uh, V square over 2G. Yeah. So we have the head losses and the minor head losses, and this is the FL. So it will be FL over dV square over 2G. This is the dynamic. Dynamic, it's coming from the head loss minor plus friction and the velocity. Now, the total head loss, it will be the static head loss plus dynamic. It means that this pump should cover should cover the whole losses and the whole head losses that we have. The pump should cover the static, the 40 meters plus the head loss due to the pipe length, the head losses due to minor head losses, the head loss due to the uh, minor head loss friction and the velocity. In that case, I will get an edge. That edge is called total, total head that's required for this pump. And I will substitute that T, HT here, I will get the values of the, the value of the power that's needed for this uh, pump. Uh, this is in general. In general, in, in, in case that we don't have this level, what I will do, I will just find from the survey, I will say how much is the ground level at the first unit and add it five meters to that one, and you will get the friction, uh, you will get the first unit, uh, uh, first unit uh, uh, level, and do the procedure. Now, for example, if you wanna design the sump, so what I want, design the sump and the sump, uh, the pump of uh, water treatment plant of 2000 meter cube per hour, if the water level in the sump is plus 11.5. So here's the sump, this the plus 1.5 meter. Now uh, the first treatment units level, the first treatment units level is 20 meter. So the water here is lower than this one. So we need to have a pump. This pump will take water from here to there. So how much is the static head that we need? At least 20 minus 11.5, 9.5 meter just will be the magnitude of the uh, static head. Now, uh, when you say that neglect the secondary uh, losses, it means neglect the minor losses and so on. 
So when I'm not, uh, uh, I, I don't have to, uh, to, to consider the, the secondary losses. So this is gonna be the first, uh, the total head loss. So the total head loss will be the uh, 9.5 meter. Now we said the horsepower is gamma rho QH total over 0.75 N1 and N2. Now, what is the row? It's the 1,000 kilogram per meter cube. What is the uh, flow? The flow that we have is 22,000 meter cube per hour. You should convert this one into meter cube per second. See how much is the meter cube per second that's needed. Uh, uh, that will be uh, our uh, uh, solving. Let, let me check with the... Yeah, so this is was the, uh, sorry, 20 minus 11, it's 8.5, not 9.5. So the this is, there will be the study. The dynamic, you say that it's the friction help now my, uh, plus the uh, secondary air losses and the velocity. We don't need to have the water level in the sum. So H, V, and these are all zero. So uh, the total head is the 8.5 meter that's required. So we need to have a pump to raise water for 8.5 meter. How much is the flow? Our flow is 2,000 meter cube per hour, which means how much in meter per meter per second. We just convert that hour sixty by sixty second to get uh, 0.56 meter cube per second. So 0.56 meter cube per second times 1,000 times the total head, that's 8.5 here divided by 75 and why it's 75 because it's in the equation and uh, now what is the uh, efficiency one and what is the efficiency two efficiency one and efficiency two it's the pump efficiency and the motor inside the pumps efficiency the pump efficiency and the motor inside the pumps efficiency are uh, here's the pump efficiency means that this pump cannot uh, work in inside water fully. It will work outside the water in 100%, but if you are do, uh, putting it in water, it will not be um, effective more than 80%. So usually the efficiency, it will be 80%. Uh, the worst condition is to take 0.7 if the, water, if the pump was all. Uh, motor efficiency inside this pump, there will be a motor and due to electricity and generation, there will be uh, uh, from 18 to 19. In general, if you combine the both two efficiencies, it will be 0 0.6, 0 0.6 or 60%. So 60% could be considered as the maximum efficiency of these tanks, of these pumps. So that's why I'm using 0.6 here. It should be given. Now, uh, 0.6, 100, 1,000 times 5.56, it will be 560. And 560 times 8.5, let me check. Uh, 560 times 8.5. Uh, that's 4,760 divided uh, times 8.5 divided by 75 divided by 0.6. So at least you have to have a pump with a horsepower 105.78 uh, horsepower, which means about 106 horsepower. This is the way. So you have, when you are going to the, to, to the shop, you, you want to buy, you have to buy uh, pumps of 106 horsepower to cover all the whole losses and to convey water from the sump to the tank. Okay? Hello? Is it clear? Doctor, how do we know we should choose only two pumps? Yeah, this is for one pump. Uh, yeah, uh, how to look at this one? Uh, usually in the in this uh, when we say that the maximum, look at this one. It was the two thousand meter cube per hour. This is will be uh, for one pump, 
I want to choose two pumps for Q. So usually the number of the pumps should be even number. And this even number, it will be uh, Y even number. Uh, uh, because I don't, sorry. Because it's uh, the chosen pump plus uh, one pump that is that acts as a standby. Yes, correct. So each one we have to have its and its standby. By, and there will be another standby here. So we have to have an even number and for each of them should be a standby. And I think we have I mentioned somewhere well, how to select the number of the outcomes. I think here's... Uh, where is it? Somewhere I mentioned this. Yeah. Um, total number of the pumps working plus standby. Uh, um, usually it should be an even number. I don't know. I mentioned somewhere that we need to know how. Anyway. So the number of the pumps should be an even number and she should have a standby for them. That's why we have four. Yeah. Choose two pumps of Q. So what I did, I just divided that Q by two. So divided 560 by two will give you 280, right? Now 280 is, uh, this is minimum. You can choose more than two, you can choose three pumps, it's up to you. But when you are using more pumps, it means the dimension of the sums will be changed, will be changed. You have to consider that one because the pumps should be have, every one of them should have from one to three meters length. So you have to, to take care about this one. So uh, now we have uh, one, two, three. By the way, when we are go, when we are saying we have four pumps is needed, we should consider that one in our design. So four times the space for four pumps, it will be the length of the sum, and the width will be between one to three. Uh, okay, I, is that was clear to you? Yes, sir. Is, this is minimum, minimum you have to have two, but somewhere else, sometimes what we have as a designers, we have the queue and we are waiting for the, uh, for the uh, uh, owner of the project. Uh, they say that, okay, we have uh, the catalog of the pumps that we have here is our day. So we should check for the horsepower of that pumps, the available ones. And for each pumps, there will be head, total head capable of them. And there will be efficiencies of the pumps are very important. This is will be affected uh, on our, uh, our design and in our selection for the pumps. <coughs> okay. Hello. Sorry, it is under. Okay. Now, and this is was the first uh, part of the water treatment plan. So before we start supplying water, we have an intake. And from the intake, there will be a sound. Uh, from the sound, there will be the first unit. Then there will be a water treatment plan. The water treatment plan is a plan or it's a, a collection of the hydraulic structures so that we will have it. Uh, everywhere and uh, just to purify water. There is, uh, there is um, uh, selective states. There will be selected uh, units that will be used in this plan. Uh, here for the Kandu treatment plan, there will be, this is, will be the first unit. The water is coming here and it will be divided into two parts. This is called sedimentation tank. Or clarifiers. 
And these are two types of clarifiers. Then why we have the, these clarifiers? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We have uh, four clarifiers and um, we have two. This is the dashed line are for the future extension. This is for the future extension and they didn't, they are not built yet now. Uh, then the clarifier is used for settling. Settling. Uh, 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 solids from the raw water. The raw water is sending, to, you just send water from the river to that unit, and this raw water is including solid material, sand, for example, gravels, and uh, some bacteria, some algae, and so on. So we will have these all in the raw water. What should we do? We should treat that raw water. First, we will start removing the solid parts. The solid parts is called physical treatment. Physical treatment, uh, uh, I will just let the water uh, in a tank for five to 10 hours, for example, and we'll see how much it will be uh, settled, the settling due to that one. Then uh, I will jump to the next step. Now, this is called clarifier. After clarifier, there will be filter filtration. Now, some of the particles are not sticky together and it, 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 will, it want to, to be settled. So what should we add? We should add some enhancement, some additives. Uh, we need to add some uh, chemical materials to, to the non-settleable materials. We wait, we waited for eight hours and it doesn't settle. It means that it will suspend and uh, solids. So what should we do? We will add some chemical materials to that uh, solids and they will be uh, another kind of sedimentation. It's called flocculation. Flock. It will make a kind of flocks. Then they will combine each together and the volume will increase and the weight will increase Then they will be uh, enforced to be settled. And this is will be before the uh, filters. The filter units are the units that is the last uh, unit for the uh, sedimentation process. This is will be the last thing. And after that, there is only, only chlorination tank. The only chlorination tank is just to remove the bacteria and uh, some of the uh, microorganisms that stay in, in dilution and dissolved in the water. And we will add some chlorine or ozone sometimes or chloride and to be added to these tanks and stay for one hour, then we can send the water to for whole steam. Now, the first part of this long story is the sedimentation tank. We know to, we, we have to know how this is will act. This sedimentation tank, as I told you, this is a, a physical uh, treatment. What that means, that means we will have, for example, uh, we have a tank like this. This tank, it will be, for example, it, it was rectangular in shape. So what we send water to this tank, what will be happen? The water is in this tank. It will stay for a period. The water is coming from this way. So if I have a particle in this uh, solid material in this water, it will go from this part to this part. So traveling, it will travel. While it's traveling, its weight is affecting on the travel. So what will come after a while, it will come here. And why it's moved down? Because this particle has a velocity this velocity is called settling velocity. Also, it has a horizontal velocity because it's moving. Now, after another while, there will be the same thing here. And until I will see the particle is laid on the bottom of the stack. This is called sedimentation, sedimentation or uh, uh, clarifiers. These are the these tanks are clarifiers. We have Two, we have based on the shape, we have rectangular, rectangular clarifier, and we have circular one. As you can, as you uh, saw in this uh, the chapter that, uh, yeah, 
in the Dukan's uh, clarifier, they are all circular shape. These are circular clarifiers, but uh, the, an old version of the clarifiers was as uh, rectangular clarifiers. Okay, now uh, there are some terms, there are some points we have to know when we are going to design these clarifiers. First of all, how much is the time that you need? It's called retention time. How much is the time that the water will stay in this time? That's a very important factor. This time is called retention time, and we have a, a standard for that. The standard one is here. The standard, it will be between one to eight hours. That's the T, okay? Now, this tank usually has dimension. The dimension, the length, it will be the, dim the dimension of the flow when it's traveled from there to there. And the width is the width of the tank and there will be an edge, right? So the volume of the tank is equal to length times edge times W. Do you agree with me? Hello, Agar. Yes, sir, we're with you. Okay, now we know that the, the, these are all the first dimension. We have a Q. The Q is the flow that's coming from the sum. So uh, it will be maximum monthly. So this Q will come inside these tanks. For example, if I have two tanks, so I will just justify this Q into by two. So. Uh, if you can see here, we have for Dukan Dam, the flow is coming from this tank, and from this tank, it will be divided by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So each of them, we have Q divided by eight. There is a pipe that's delivering water, uh, uh, delivering that's sending water. This is will send water to these four pipes. This is will send water to these four pipes. So the main pipe, the Q divided by eight, it means that the flow that will come to each tank, okay? Uh, so the Q, I have the flow that's coming from this one. So there is a definition that I say that if this Q, if I divide the Q by the surface area, what is the surface area of this tank? Here's the surface area. The surface area of this tank will be equal to how much? Surface area. It's the area that is the flow will act. It's top view area. For my case, it's equal to length times the W, right? Am I right? The length of this tank. Yes, sir. Okay. So this Q divided by the length divided by W is having a, a term is called SOR, surface overflow rate. The surface overflow rate is, the, uh, is a very important measuring device. Uh, it should be between, uh, it should be between that we needed to design. This is called, uh, uh, where is it? Ah, yeah. Um, this is called SOR, it will be between 20 to 80 meter per day. It means one meter square of the tank will can treat at least 20 to 80 meter cube per day. This is normal. What, what I can use for uh, that one, if I said we have 1000 meter cube per second, this is was the cube, and I have two tanks, means the flow will come into two tanks. So each tank will take how much? 500 meter cube per second, right? This is the 1000 meter cube per second. This is coming from the sun. So I have two circular tanks, okay? So uh, each of them will deliver 500 meter cube per second. If uh, I want to see how much is the, the diameter of this tank will handle this Q. What should I do? 
I will say we have SOR. The surface overflow rate will be range from 20 to 80 meter per day. Or I will pick let one of them. Can you tell me a number? For example. 60. Yeah, you took the upper part. <laughs> okay, so, and 60 meter per day. And I will come and convert it to meter per second. Just divide it by uh, 24. So 60 meter divided by um, 16, uh, 360. And divided by 24 hours. So it will be point oh. Oh, seven. Am I right? Meter cube per second. Oh, sorry, meter per second. Or yeah, this is going to be the the uh, the the what the S O R value. Now, what is my point? What I am looking for? I want to see how much is the diameter of this tank that will can hold this five hundred meter per second. I will say S O R is equal to Q divided by area of the tank. And the area of the tank is pi d squared, d diameter of square of the clarified divided by four. Uh, and this is gonna be 500 meter cube per second. This is should be equal to 0 0.007 meter cube per second. So from this one, I can get the value of what? The value of d. So d pi d squared over four will equal to 500 divided by 0 0.007, which means how much? Uh, 0 0.007 times uh, 5, 500 divided by 0 0.007, that's 71,000, okay, times four, divided by 3.14, that will be 90,991. So this square will be like this. So I'll take the square root of this one. So the diameter is equal about 300 meters. So 300 meters is too large. So what should we do? We should decrease this Q. It means that you have to have at least another tanks. So what I will do, I will add another three tanks. So that's what means, what means, and it means that every tank we can get 1,000 divided by eight. So how much is the Q will be per each tank? It will be 1,000 divided by eight. Then we have 125 meter cube per second. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, the 60, which is the 125 divided by 0.007, will become and equal to pi d square over 4. So 125 divided by 0.007 uh, times 4 divided by 3.14 and take the square root of the answer. So now the diameter is about 150, which is also high. So you should increase Sir? that. Yeah. How do you know that the diameter is high or too large? Yeah. Like, when yeah. did we compare the 300 and the 100? Okay. Where, where, where I, by the way, we have a standard length of this. So for rectangular signs, we have the length should not be more than uh, 100 meters. For the circular shapes, it shouldn't be more than 40. The, the diameter should be less or equal to the 40 meters. These are the standards and you can see in the, uh, in, in the PowerPoints, there are some, uh, yeah. By the way, here's the segmentation time. Uh, this is very, this is sorry. Um, 
Can you see in the share file? Yes, sir, I can. Yeah. Hi, John here. In this video, we got. You got this one. This is the sedimentation done. You can see here is the, uh, this is what we call, uh, this is called a bridge. And the water stay here for eight, uh, for eight hours. While it stay in this tank, uh, we have a mixer. This is called a mixer. Uh, and this mixer is just uh, to settle down the bottom, uh, the bottom. Um, sorry. Yeah, and this is the way that's working. Yeah. It's in the, in the, yeah, this is the circular shape. Back to your question. How do we know this is how it will be? Um, Where's the slides? Uh, Okay, this is a typical, typical design criteria for the tanks. And from the typical design, uh, we need to know how much is the number of tank. Usually it will be more than one, it will be even number. And uh, for the length of the pipes, look at this one, it will be three meters, 30 meters till 60 meters. So it should be less than 60 meters. And the width of the tank, um, when I say this is for the rectangular shape and for the, um, a circular shape, it will be less than 40 meters. In Dukan, we have two types of circular shape. One is 30 meters, and another one is 36 meter diameters. So both of them are less than 40 meters. And the depth, as I told you, there is an overflow rate or surface overflow rate. It will be between 20 to 80. This is normal, or 20 to 60. Uh, uh, this is called a uh, normal medium flow rate. We have high flow rate, high rates uh, settler. It, the, the, the tanks over flow rate, it will tell 180 meter cube per meter square per day. This number is very important. It means the one meter square of the bottom tank of the tank, one meter square by one meter can deliver, can treat about how much 60 meter cube per a day. So we can say every one meter square from the bottom tank can deliver uh, 60 meter cube per a day. So as much as was the area, it means that you need more. Okay, uh, is that clear? So this is one, yeah, this is was one of the uh, main important things. So we, 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 we we discussed what is that uh, that detention means. So the SOR. I'm sorry for the horrible. Okay, so uh, the the SOR it's, it looks like telling you that uh, this is the vertical velocity or settling velocity of what of this particle. Every particle when it's moving, it is while it's moving in. The, this is the water surface water. This is the particle and uh, if it is that di its diameter diameter was equal is equal to d then this particle within the time if you release that particle it will it slowly will get down it will move to to another place downward this is by what? By having a velocity. This velocity called Vs. And some of the textbooks called it as a determinant. Terminal velocity or 
VT or terminal, terminal velocity. Okay, so we have, for example, a particle of sand particle, its diameter is D. It's going to, we are letting this particle to settle down. So what will be affected by the gravity? The gravity will affect on. So as much as you have a particle diameter is greater, it will settle soon, right? So uh, this Vs settling velocity, it will be managed by a, a rule, which is called Stokes velocity, Stokes law. Stokes law is the law that will govern, it will discuss how much is the settling velocity of a particle will be when it's left in rest in water. Let's say that the velocity is equal to 1 over 18 g over mu rho particle minus rho d particle square. Any particle usually has a diameter. This is the diameter of the particle. So much bigger diameter, the cell phone will be increased. It will be very, um, it will not be uh, just, it, if the diameter was one millimeters, the velocity will, if it was 100, it, it, the, the diameters, if I increase the diameter by two, then the velocity will be increased by power of that one, four, four times of the, so, if diameter was one, it, th this is was one, if I increase this one to two, the velocity will increase to two power two, four times of the. So this is the relation between the diameter. Much diameter, it means bigger in weight, uh, it means it's bigger in, uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, higher in velocity. G is the gravity, it's the 9.81 meter per second squared. Mu is the viscosity, viscosity of water. What the viscosity of water is, it is the, in the fluid mechanics, we took, you took that one. Uh, it means how much uh, Pascal second or how much Newton per meter square per second will be the force of the viscosity. It means that the water is high viscosity or low viscosity, or the temperature will affect on this part, by the way. And we have another thing that what's the kind of the particle is that? Is it sand or it's gravel? What, what is the difference between sand and gravel? They have each of them its specific gravity. So for sand, we have a specific gravity for gravel. So a row or density of any uh, of the particles will be measured by rho particle is equal to specific gravity times rho water. Now, this is, should be given to you. You have to check whether your, your, your raw water is including uh, sand or gravel, and you have to discover that. So uh, this settling velocity will discuss how much is the particles on this. Now, uh, do you have any question regarding this? Now we just mention how this particle will settle from here to there just Vs. And there is another velocity. The particle is going to move and it will settle down. So there is a horizontal movement velocity. Okay. Now, this horizontal settling of this tank will be considered as this. So this is for vertical. There is a horizontal. This particle is moving this way, Vs, and it's moving this way, V horizontal. Horizontal velocity of this particle is equal to Q over A. Which A? Area. So A, the water is going this way. So there is a bureau. area, I mean by the area of this tank. So the Q over the area, which is the W times the H. This is the cross-sectional area. So look at this. This is the particle and it's moving this way. So what is the area of this part? It's the edge, the depth of water times the width of the tank. So it's equal to edge times the width. This is called horizontal velocity. So there is a vertical velocity. This is the Q over 
Yes, do you understand me? This is will be the uh, the Stokes law, and it's equal to Q over we got this one. The particle is moving vertically. It means the Q divided by which area? The bottom area. So the bottom area it means the L times W, which is equal to S O R. Now. From the previous, from the mentioned rules, we have a uh, horizontal velocity of particles is equal to Q divided by uh, length, uh, sorry, width times H. That's called cross section now area. And we have the base length is equal to Q divided by length times the W. And this is equal to SOR. This is equal to SOR. So SOR has two definitions. One of them is Q divided by L length, and it's equal to settling velocity, which is equal to 1 over 18 G over nu. Operating G over mu uh, rho particle minus rho or to the particle square. This is the uh, I think we don't have much more time. We will finish uh, this lecture later in the next uh, tomorrow. Okay. I want you to take a break and be prepared for 3:30. Unless if you have any question. Sir, uh, we are going to find Zoom again at 3.30.